So you can take it with you. Uh, the one who dies with the most toys still dies. And my personal favorite, uh, they don't make hearses with trailer hitches. <laughs> and we could go on with those for a while, but you know the point that they make. Uh, it's the same point that's there in Psalm 49. Earthly riches have some value. They are a gift from God and can do some good in this life, but they can't save you. They're not what really matters. Uh, there's, that's an important truth in Psalm 49, but there's another truth in the heart of the psalm that I want to spend our time focusing on. Uh, the psalm writer talks about how no man can give his life to redeem the life of another, that, that no human life is payment enough to pay for another. That no matter how good someone is, if it's just a, a good man dying for someone else, uh, that one good man's life really isn't enough to pay for the life of another sinful human. It, he's talking about our limits in redeeming each other. And you get that the meaning of that word, uh, to redeem, to ransom, right? Uh, the first congregation I had the privilege of pastoring was back in Wisconsin, and it wasn't far down the road from a police station. In front of the police station, there was a statue of the former police chief with his arm around the child. And you see, years before that, uh, there had been a hostage situation. And a gunman was on the run, and he found a child and took her hostage. And the police chief, uh, Thomas Buntrock, came into the situation and told the gunman to take him as a hostage instead. You see, the gunman realized that the police chief's life had more value. It was worth more than the life of the child. So he agreed to that trade. Uh, they put the statue there because in the ensuing hours, the police chief lost his life uh, in a gunfight. He redeemed the life of the child. He gave his life as payment for her life. That's what God does for us. He redeems our life, not just with a, the life of a good man or a wonderful teacher, but he gives his holy, perfect life so that we can know that the, the price for our sins has been fully and forever paid. Uh, Martin Luther used a picture for that that I've always liked. He, he tells you to picture a set of scales, like one of those old scales of liberty, and on one side, you put all of the souls of all of the people who have ever lived in this world with all of their sins and all of their guilt, just this monstrous, awful weight of wickedness. And if you put the life of one good man on the other side, we sink down. But if you take the life of God himself, the maker of the heavens and the earth, his perfect life, and you put it on the other side, we fly up. He redeems us. So think about that tonight. As we go to bed in our houses, uh, Lord willing, with a little bit of cash in our bank accounts and food in our fridge, those riches, those blessings are wonderful gifts from God. But they're not what really matter. It's not just that you have, through faith, the one who really matters. It's the promise that in Christ, he has you. The word of God tonight in Psalm chapter 49. For the director of music of the sons of Korah, a psalm. Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all who live in this world, both low and high, rich and poor alike. My mouth will speak words of wisdom. The utterance from my heart will give understanding. I will turn my ear to a proverb with a harp, I will expound my riddle. Why should I fear when evil days come, when wicked deceivers surround me, those who trust in their wealth and boast of their great riches? No man can redeem the life of another or give to God a ransom for him. The ransom for a life is costly. No payment is ever enough that he should live on forever and not see decay. For all can see that wise men die, the foolish and the senseless alike perish and leave their wealth to others. Their tombs will remain their houses forever, their dwellings for endless generations, though they had named lands after themselves. But man, despite his riches, does not endure. He is like the beasts that perish. 
This is the fate of those who trust in themselves and of their followers who approve their sayings. Like sheep, they are destined for the grave and death will feed on them. The upright will rule over them in the morning. Their forms will see decay in the grave, far from their princely mansions. But God will redeem my life from the grave. He will surely take me to himself. Do not be overawed when a man grows rich, when the splendor of his house increases, for he will take nothing with him when he dies. His splendor will not descend with him, though while he lived he counted himself blessed, and, and men praise you when you prosper. He will join the generation of his fathers who will never see the light of life. A man who has riches without understanding is like the beasts that perish. We pray. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us all with great riches, um, certainly compared to the standard of living that mankind is used to enjoying. Uh, the poorest of, our, of us count ourselves blessed. But we ask that you don't bless us with riches without understanding, but that you help us to see where our treasure is. And teach us that the God who loves us has, has given a ransom, a costly, precious, precious ransom for each of us. That means we know our lives have value. That means that we know we have peace with you. Amen. God bless your night.